most families, you know, if there was an extra two hundred dollars needed a month, they don't, you know, they didn't have it. They don't it have was, it. They don't have it. So, you know, this is well, four and that's times the that. thing with that price going up as well. You know, I know what it's like for me, and I'm sure you do. Where you know, buying groceries now, you know, has added quite a large extra sum of money going out every month just for food, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, if you've already been doing that now you're getting hit by this, you know, this price, this monthly increase in, you know, in expenses for your mortgage, it's a, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot for most families. Man. You're listening to the Ottawa real estate podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Welcome back to another episode of the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast. I'm Paul, one of your hosts, and as always, I'm joined by the one and only Greg Cambrick, our in-house expert realtor here on the show. Unfortunately, Dave Warren is not going to be with us today, but don't worry, Greg and I have you covered with the latest insights and updates from the real estate world. Friendly reminder, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and wherever you're listening to this podcast, hit the subscribe button, leave us a review, and don't forget to comment. We do actually read all of them and we love interacting with you guys so and girls and everyone else. So sit back, <laughs> relax, and get ready for today's episode. We're going to be diving into the latest market trends, sharing our perspectives on what's happening in Ottawa and discussing how these developments impact you, our listeners. So grab a coffee, sit back, and let's get started. Greg, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. I'm great. Feeling, feeling good about things. Feeling good about things. You know, there's been a lot, lot going on. A lot of action. A lot of talk. A lot yeah. of speculation. A lot of what people you, asking questions. What do you, you know? Hearing? I think. What are, what are the What are the rumors? What are you hearing? What's happening well, in the it's streets? Just the, you know, it's that new comedy that everyone starts talking about waiting for the rates i mean we've talked about this you know waiting for the rate Mm -hmm. and you know most people it 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 shouldn't matter it doesn't matter but to some they're really waiting for that waiting for that moment waiting for that moment well i can lead off of the story i got a story about rates let's go for it okay i so had a client that came to me about a month ago uh closing today so this is kind of a feel-good story at the end of the day uh, but basically, they were pre-approved eight months ago by their bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, went out shopping, confident, you know, knew their numbers, actually did the right thing. And then what happened is... The oh, my God, late- sorry. Oh, my God. Sorry. I keep trying to change things, and they pop up here. I'm trying to bring up the comments from the show last okay. week. Sorry, Paul. Sorry I interrupted you. Just, you can <laughs> always start over if you'd like. I'm just kind of irritated here right now. That's Okay. Let it out, Greg. I'll just Letting continue my story. So so basically, the pre-approved by the bank, doing the right things, out shopping, uh, super knowledgeable realtor. I worked with them many times, so it wasn't this wasn't like a, a ball drop on the, on, the, on the goal line. So pre-approved, out shopping, super confident. Obviously, I haven't talked to these clients. They found a place about, I guess it'd be about two and a half months ago now. So they basically, so they were shopping for, I guess, five, six months. Push comes to shove, they go to get their approval. Turns out the rates had shifted from when they originally were pre-approved and they no longer qualified. They were buying at the maximum of what they could afford, which happens quite often, believe it or not. And basically the rates had adjusted about a half percent from where they had originally been pre-approved and thought their numbers were. So the Mm -hmm. bank said, basically, we can no longer qualify you. They had no access to further down payment. There was a lot of kind of moving parts. I won't get into the specifics, but long story short, this comes to me about a month ago and the realtor basically said like, here's the situation. Conditions are waived. Clients thought they had their financing in order, wow. push comes to shove, bank can't do it anymore. What can we do? So to, like, uh, I know Dave and I say this all the time, but on our side, there is a bit more flexibility. We have a large multitude of lenders that have an appetite for different types of files. I was able to get this done with a, a monoline bank, so like a mortgage-focused bank that was able to consider their income differently than the banks were. In this case, they, were, they had some additional income, some contributory income from other people in the household, and they also had like CCB income, so child tax credit income and things like that. There was other income we could use to kind of strengthen the file, and we were able to get it done. But it was just one of those things where like even when people did the right thing, they were pre-approved, they were mm-hmm. shopping, they still 
had a curveball at the last minute. And in my opinion, I think this was a matter of, in this specific case, that the bank specifically did not do like a true underwritten pre-approval. They didn't get any right. documents up front. They didn't do any credit polls. They basically just talked to the clients, gave them kind of a ballpark of where they should sit. And they took that as gospel and kind of went out shopping for homes, which to me isn't really a pre-approval, right? That's more of just kind of a, you know, they had their rate held, which was kind of the most important thing, but the rates, sorry, they did not have a rate hold, which which was the most important thing, because if they had gotten a true pre-approval that was underwritten, the bank would have actually held that rate for them and they would have been able to qualify at the rate that they had originally thought they were working under. So it was just one of those things where they had the rate in their head that they thought they were going to get, the rates shifted, and then, you know, they were kind of left left in a tough place. So it was a feel good story. It's closing today. I just got a notification that everything is ready to fund. So it's it's kind of, uh, you know, I'm happy talking about it now. But it's it was a bit of a, you know, when people come to you stressed like that, it makes it much more challenging. And, and it does happen oftentimes where we're kind of thought of as not necessarily a last resort, but kind of the, the, maybe a backup plan. People think to go to their banks first right. and then like, oh, well, we couldn't get it done. So let's go talk to a broker. I think it's becoming more commonplace that people speak to a broker first or at least realtors understand that brokers have more options i know when we first started greg which you know decades ago 11 years ago you know when we were doing this people were shopping without pre-approvals at all like people would just go out and start shopping mm -hmm. and you know you would be showing them 10 15 20 homes without even a single credit check done you know they might have just started a job they're they're working for uber you know like nobody was getting pre-approved it was very commonplace to just go out yeah put in an offer conditional upon financing and then try to get a mortgage, you know? And I think there's still some people that are kind of in that mindset of like, Oh, we think we know our numbers. Let's go shopping. Or they think they yeah. know the numbers and tell their professional who they're shopping with their realtor that, you know, we know our numbers We're pre-approved like, okay, great. They talk to their bank. They're good to go. And then, yeah. you know, at the 11th hour, well, we couldn't get pre-approved. <laughs> okay. Well, we waived, we waived our conditions. So what do we do now? Well, there's somebody what, that we spoke we with. Do? A couple of weeks ago that was you know we're we're pre-approved to this amount this is what we want to see and then so Vencat actually went out with these guys and you know it was okay first conversation go out and meet we're not too strict on the the buyer rep agreement getting signed on the first outing you want to make sure that you're you're comfortable with the people and that you guys actually enjoy each other's company and it's not just like some type of immediate nightmare that you're walking in before you're locked into an agreement with somebody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, he found out along the way that the approval that they said they had was actually not an actual approval. They had never submitted any documents. So they, it was a little bit of a misinformation once he spoke with the other, the other partner. And, you know, anyways now, and they still haven't submitted any documents to get full approval. So we basically just said, well, let us know when you're, when you're actually ready, because we can't help you until you have that approval, because it's just not, it's a waste of time for, for you and for us, you know, we want to help, but you have to help yourself. So make sure you get all that in. So back to your, your comment there, I wonder, so is that just an uneducated buyer trusting in the bank itself and was the person at the bank they were dealing with were they a mortgage specialist or were they just somebody at the bank well, well I, I'm assuming. I, I, yeah i would imagine that's a good question actually and i don't know the answer to that question a little late to ask i guess at this point but i get the impression in dealing with the clients that they're they seem very like knowledgeable i would say they're maybe overly trusting you know, like they're sure. very, they were trusting of the person advising them. So I, my understanding is that the person advising them told them specifically, you are pre-approved up to this amount. So that's, they took that as gospel. And I think right. maybe there wasn't that extra step of, we haven't provided them any documentation. They didn't pull any credit. Like, how could they know this accurately? Like to them, it was like, okay, we're good. Let's go shopping. That's like it was just, you know, it was just, you're excited. You're, you want to get out and buy a home. Like, you know, so yeah. So I think, you know, it's... It, there's no, there's, and I said this a few weeks ago, there's no easy, like what looks to be a simple file right now, even people that are on, you know, fixed incomes, like every file, every single file I touch has some hair on it. Like there's no, like whether it being lenders being more strict with their policies or clients income, like I said, shifted throughout the pandemic or they're in a new job and things are a bit different or they think they're paid one way, but they're paid another way. But it's just like, there's always something that's wonky on a file and it does make it, the, the conversation's much more complex. So I would think as someone 
who had worked at the bank, I've worked at the bank previously to becoming a broker that I know my knowledge in working at the branch level was, you know, a fraction of what it is now right. being a specialist right. in mortgages. So you never know what advice people are getting, what they're receiving and, and how they're being directed. So, you know, I, I feel for those people that go in thinking they're doing what's best. Like they might not have even known that brokers existed before going to, they just always, Oh, finance. Right. I got to go to my bank. Right. I mean, that still happens very frequently. So, you know, I think in this case, this is kind of a one-off. I just thought it was relevant because you were talking about rates and that was the first thing that came to my mind. But the other thing I wanted to say that there was a, an article I was reading uh, yesterday, not, not this morning about the U S inflation eased in June, which is good news for Canadian mortgage shoppers. So, Basically, the U.S. financial markets, as Dave mentions all the time, like they do heavily influence the decisions made here in Canada. So I'll just read the beginning of this article. It says U.S. financial markets got a boost today with a lower than expected inflation reading, marking the lowest level since May 2020. Headline inflation in the U.S. fell by 0.1 month over month in June after a flat reading in May and against expectations for a 0.1 monthly gain. Core inflation, which excludes volatile food and energy prices, rose just 0.1 percent, a deceleration from May's. 0.16 0.16 gain. So why Canadian mortgage borrowers should care. So it says, if you're wondering why as a Canadian homeowner, you should be interested in US inflation trends, it's because easing inflation in the US can lead to lower interest rates, potentially benefiting mortgage rates in Canada. A very critical data point for Canadian mortgage interest rates is US inflation data, notes rate expert Bruno Volko, who's the VP of national sales for RMG, which is one of our lenders. This is because it impacts the US 10-year treasury yield, which the five-year government of Canada bond yield follows closely. So, you know, we talk about this all the time and actually check right now while we're on the air what the bonds are at today for the government, the Canada five-year government bond. So 3.32. So it's actually, it's you know, it's honestly been fairly stagnant, I would say. You know, we, we talk about it. It was, it was, you know, it was rising pretty dramatically for a couple weeks there. There's a little, mm-hmm. little bit of nervousness, but that was also, again, because of the inflation numbers out of the state's last month they were flat and that caused people to be like oh shoot maybe you know maybe things are going to shift again so you know they're down from july 4th it was at 3.6 and now we're sitting at 3.3 so you know it's dropped over a quarter point in the last what two weeks so you know there's likelihood based on i'm looking at the six month chart right now it looks like the fixed rates could continue to drop. Now, what's interesting is that the Bank of Canada has their policy interest rate announcement next Wednesday. And that will, you know, this could very well, it could influence that. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. I think the most important thing for people to remember is that the Bank of Canada's policy announcements, policy interest rate announcements do not impact the fixed rates. So things like this, like the right. bonds, as we were talking about, you know, we should put the five-year government bond link in the comments every week, just so people can actually follow it. Cause I think people are interested in it. Cause every time people talk to me about the show, they ask me about where rates are heading and what's happening with the bonds. And so it is, people are edu- like educated on this now, which is excellent. I mean, that's the whole point of us providing this information, but the policy rate from the bank of Canada will only impact the variable rates and obviously every other, you know, revolving credit so you know any revolving credit card that has a fluctuating interest rate lines of credit you know student loans student loans of credit things like that so personally i don't think we're going to see a drop next month as we've said before i think we're you know the bank canada is going to wait at least a few months to see how that first drop impacted things Mm -hmm. but i have heard other arguments that there was you know they should have done a half point Last month, mm-hmm. they did a quarter point to see how that would impact it. And now that they haven't seen much of a change, they may do another quarter point just to see how that sort of half point changes. So who knows? Uh, you know, we've been wrong basically every time uh, when it comes to the policy announcements. So have we? I'm going to say, a, no, I'm going to say a one point drop next week. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, no. So yeah, my guess is they'll hold rates, at least the overnight rate, probably until, you know, the latter end of the year, just to see where things fall. But We've been wrong before. That's all I'm saying. So we'll see what happens. Are you thinking of buying or selling a residential property? Relationships are at the heart of every real estate transaction. At Geltain Poirier Avocat Lawyers, we love to bring residential buyers, sellers, agents, lenders, mortgage brokers, and the law together to close the deal for you. 
For an effortless client experience that opens doors, call us at 613-744-4488 or visit our website at guertinpoirierlaw.ca. Let's get to the heart of your deal. Are you trying to grow your mortgage business? Centum has the tools and support to help you take your business to the next level. Get access to everything from free unlimited custom marketing to daily direct pay. Find out what your business can do with Centum. Learn more at joincentum.ca. Yeah, who knows where this is going. But it's like there's always that lull now where, you know, the last these this next week is going to be quieter than usual, I think, because because of this rate announcement that's coming up again as happened on the last one and we'll have two weeks of like a lot of people shopping and then might break again yeah but uh i mean it's 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 an interesting market i have some comments and some numbers that i wanted to share with everyone i was at an iron prior last night the iron oh. the iron prior the prior nice and it was very enlightening i guess you could say seeing what was available in terms of townhomes or semis in Arnprior versus Ottawa. So I did a little comparison for Arnprior versus Canada, townhomes and semis. Mm -hmm. I won't read through this entire thing that I created, creating things out of the data, the data. The average, the average list price in Arnprior right now for semis and townhomes is 512, 513,000. And the average, the median days on market is 28 days. 537,000? So 500, no, 513,000. 513 for a townhome. For a townhome. For a townhome. The average sales price was 494,000. Oh, wow. So the other one's the active listing. Price range 513 versus sold price of 494. Okay, the average days on market is 36 days on market. So that's still within, you know, a steady kind of balanced market. We're not hitting two months on the townhomes yet, which I don't know is going to happen. You know, there's some popular streets out there. Desmond Trudeau, I saw three on Desmond Trudeau last night. One was a bungalow semi, beautiful. And then two standard townhomes, all very bungalow different. Bungalow semi. That's interesting. Bungalow semi, very, yeah, mm. very cool. Lots of space back on the park. It was amazing. Like, then, you know, and the basement's huge in a bungalow. So even in a bungalow semi, you got all that extra space. Now, though, some of the ones we saw had unfinished basements, which was very, you know, it's kind of rare to see mm -hmm. in a townhome now, but that's just something that I noticed. But bang for your buck, like Arn Pryor was just, it was wild to see. I saw eight properties last night and they were all reasonable and that had all, most of them had been on the market over 20 days, mm -hmm. which was surprising to me. A couple had price drops. But now let's look at Canada here. So the average active is 600000 And the average sales price over... This is all over the last four weeks, by the way. I should have prefaced with that. Prefaced. And the recently sold is 659000 That's the most recent sales price. Now, the range is obviously different in, in Canada. But we're looking at, you know, over 100000 plus difference. Mm -hmm. And how far from Canada is Iron Prior? Like 30 minutes, oh, not even, not even 30 not even. minutes, no, 20, yeah, 20 minutes, 20. 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's huge. If you're, if you're working in Canada, you can get a house similar to something in Canada in Arn prior for almost a hundred to $150,000 less. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to miss out on some conveniences, but you're also going to have a little bit more, more peace and quiet, smaller town vibes. Right. Yep. So I thought that was very valuable information for anyone who feels like they're priced out of the West End in Canada. Go check out Armprior or Almond if you haven't yet. There are, there are definitely some good buys down there. And if you're looking, if you're thinking from an investment standpoint, if you're looking to buy a property to rent out, clearly there's better options out there. But again, at the same time, you're not going to be able to charge the same amount as rent as you would be able to in Canada. But it's not going to be that much different. Almont's a really cool pocket as well. Little, Almont's really great. Cool town. Yeah. Yeah. 10 minutes to Carleton Place, you know, 20 minutes to Ottawa. They're great. They're, yeah, I, I love it out there. Like I, I went in, I went to uh, Lumbertown, <laughs> had a quick ale, you know. Saw some properties. It was good. And then got caught and then uh, drove home for an hour in that rainstorm. 
That was oh also my very gosh. exciting. Yeah, yeah that was insane. exciting. Not to go right to the weather, but insane yesterday. So uh, something I've seen recently, Greg, and I'm very intrigued if this is you're seeing this as well. This is with new build homes. I've been seeing row townhomes. Yes. New builds. And they have this, what they call open concept, living room, kitchen, dining room. And to me, the way it's set up, the layout, and I mean, I'm not a designer, but just the layout, the kitchen is basically like the the, ki- the kitchen would be, you know, 60% of the space. And then there's like this narrow hallway where they expect Dude. you to put a living room and Dude. a dining room. I, yes. I looked at a few and I'm like, how... Eight. How Hate. how do you even set this up? Like, how do you put a couch in here? How do you put a dining room table in here? Like, I don't even understand the idea of the layout. Can you educate it's, me, please? It is mind blowing to walk into homes that are built within the last ten years when you have that situation. Mm-hmm. There was there was one that we walked into last night. Walked in immediately. We're like, wow, this is nice and open. And then, you know, you're seeing the dining room and then you walk, you walk to the kitchen and then you're just standing there and you're going, how, like, this just does not work at all. You've Mm -hmm. got a breakfast bar off the island. Yeah. And then you've basically got like, I don't know, five feet for a couch. And then, and and then, then you're looking at the wall, which is two feet away from you. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly no television going there or there's a TV going there. And then there's like, what, a two chairs on either side. There's no space like those those designs. I honestly don't know how they sell them. I don't know why they build them. And it's common. There's even some, there's so many weird designs, basements, upper levels that just don't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. And it's it's I don't I don't know why it hasn't changed, but there's still new builds that you'll walk into to going, who's buying this? Who's the buyer for this? So here I actually have, I'm gonna see if I can pull this up. I want to not show the address, but I actually have a, oh, I can't share my screen. Damn it. You can't share your screen. No, because producer oh, Steve is not right, with right us today. To so, boo. Uh, wow. That's okay. I, but I mean. That's okay. That's okay. But yeah. So if you so walk wild. into a house and there's something, you know, this is, I mean, the, good point here. If you're buying a home. You really like, you really like, let's say you walk into a house, it wows you in some way, it's vacant or it's staged, but it's not staged in a way that makes sense for you and your family, but you love the house overall. Make sure that you go back for a second time. Make sure you go back a third time before you put in an offer because each time that you see it and the more that you stay in that house, you'll start realizing that there's elements of it that may not work for you and your family. This, oh dude, this is, yes, this is exactly... So, like, share. what do you do? Yeah, I can Cause... share this, right? Can I share this? I don't know. Maybe. Sharing is not turned on. The host isn't yeah. allowing multiple sharing. Okay. What, does that mean that you can share? No, I, I don't know what's happening. I think we're in a remote studio, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. God, we'll, we'll post this. You, you remote this is studio. Exactly, this, is exactly, this is exactly what you're showing. These panels on the floor are probably six inches. So we're talking, what, one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five feet, six feet, seven feet. So seven feet from the, not even six feet from the island edge to the other wall. So it's this dude, this is the same (laughs) layout as the house that I was in that I was talking about. It's, it's wild. Like, I just don't know. You basically can put two, two standalone chairs. And you've got, and you've got the full size window. So nothing goes on that wall. Right. And no basement. Yeah, two standalone chairs, and then you've got like a TV there in the middle because this this space at the front when you walk through is clearly the dining room, and then there's yes. still an eating area. So what do you do? You eliminate even if you eliminate the dining room, yeah, and you put a couch in there. You're so close to the stairs, and yeah, to walk yeah. through it closes off the space. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like it's just weird, weird designs. Like it needs an extra you know, four feet. Yeah. So then, hold on, but it's it's. So I apologize for everyone that we're talking like this and you can't see the images because it's going to be awful just for Im- listening. Just imagine it. You just guys, imagine it. Just you guys imagine. got imaginations. It will no, because I saw, I saw another one that was very similar to these, but it actually was, was this layout, but then had another 10 feet where you could actually put a living room. And I'm like, oh, okay, this actually makes sense. Like you can see yes. 
where you would put the living space, you mm-hmm. know, like it, 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 it's yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing you're right. Cause even off the end there where they have the eating area, that's not enough room to do anything with. It's just so unfunctional. There's no functionality. Yeah. So, sorry. I went on a bit of a tangent there. I just, I saw this yesterday and I, I thought to myself, like, how can anyone, here's another image, Greg, I'm hoping Steven can put these in the, in the video after, but this is a, basically the same layout, but this one actually has like the whole other side with a living room. So this is like functional. This makes sense. That's know? more similar to ours. But reverse. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, so, you have the space, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I wonder what these builders are thinking, really. Like, obviously, they're trying to maximize space, but you're going to have a lot of disgruntled buyers, I think, uh, or people just not buying. Like, how's this sitting? Well, so, you know, um, and, and, and to be fair, in a lot of these homes, the... The thought is that some people will be putting their entertainment in the basement. Yeah. You know, some some may not have a television on the main level. At the same time, a lot of buyers who are buying smaller townhomes have young families. Yeah. So they, if, if they are people that are into watching shows or whatever or, or anything or have young kids, you're going to want to keep everything on the main level so that you can just that's easy way to pay attention because you're in the kitchen all the time. You're out back, so you got your patio door. You know, you've got the front door. You know who's coming and going. Yeah. So you want, you know, you, you might want that television. You might want that television there. <laughs> um, gotta think, gotta think of the young families and what their budget is. Not for the the you know what is it maybe two and ten that don't have entertainment on their main level. I think that's probably a fair number. Two and ten, maybe even one and ten. Two and ten, I think is fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna do a very quick because I'm reading. I was, I was reading this article about this family in Toronto whose whose mortgage payments are going up two thousand dollars on renewal. Uh, uh, it was a CTV News article, so it was highlighting the struggle of an Ontario family whose mortgage payments are set to increase by two thousand dollars due to the rising interest rates. It says a family, like many others, is experiencing financial strain as their mortgage term comes up for renewal at a much higher rate than before, talking of rates. The situation underscores the broader issue of affordability and financial pressure on Canadian homeowners, especially in the face of consecutive interest rate hikes by the Bank of Canada. This is obviously in the past, (laughs) since they just dropped. The story reflects the real impact of economic policies and market conditions on everyday Canadians. So I wanted to actually do a quick calculation. So I did a, just so people get an idea as to the payments, $650,000 purchase. Five years ago, which, you know, it's probably over what the average home was then, but pretty close to what they are now. So I'll just use that as a ballpark. So basically $650,000 home price. We'll do a minimum down payment. So that would be 40000 on that home. So at a rate of 1.99, which probably would have been fair five years ago, the payment would be $2,683 a month. Okay. So if you did that for five years... No additional paydowns. Your balance after the five years would be five hundred thirty-one thousand three hundred twenty-six dollars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number, five three one three two six, and I'm going to tell you what that payment looks like today based on today's rates. So twenty years left on the AM. So that monthly payment is now going to be thirty-four hundred eighty-eight dollars. So just for that family. That's an increase of eight hundred dollars a month. So I don't know. These people obviously might have had a much higher. Maybe they had a lower interest rate. Maybe they had a higher mortgage. But you know, you're talking the average home, the average family. They just, you know, they renew this month. They have to readjust their budget now to account for an additional eight hundred dollars if they want to keep their home, or they have to restructure it. They have to refinance. They have to, you know, and that that is what we're seeing a lot of people doing. I'm seeing a lot of people on renewal look at options for restructuring and nothing crazy. Maybe they want to just pay off some, you know, 30, 40,000 in debt that they've accumulated over the last few years because, right. you know, right. the prices, everything's increased or what have you. But, you know, if you take that 20 year amortization, now they're extending it to 30 years or back to 25 or, you know, so they're kind of minimizing the payments, which people, I think a lot of people are doing just to manage, right. Just to kind of maintain and keep their home and keep a roof over their head. But that's a very modest home price these days like you know at 650 that that's i think a, a fair price i'm not you know i'm not using a million Very. two million dollar home so 800 dollars, let's say 800 to a thousand dollars for the average household that's that's a huge shift like most people i think there was 
that article that we talked about maybe a year ago that was talking about how most families, you know, if there was an extra two hundred dollars needed a month, they don't, you know, they didn't have it. They don't it have was, it. They don't have it. So, you know, this is well, four and that's times the that. thing with that price going up as well. You know, I know what it's like for me, and I'm sure you do. Where you know, buying groceries now, you know, has added quite a large extra sum of money going out every month just for food, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, if you've already been doing that now you're getting hit by this, you know, this price, this monthly increase in, you know, in expenses for your mortgage, it's uh, it's a lot, it's a lot for most families to handle. So, you know what I did, Greg? What did you do? I made a list of steps that homeowners should take when their mortgage terms come up for renewal and a high, oh, is interest, this, a is high this interest rate in a, Is this in a newsletter? <laughs> Is this a no. link to a newsletter? Should no, no. <laughs> yeah, imagine and click here, everybody, to read the yeah. newsletter. Yeah, no. So uh, very simply, I'll just, I mean, I'll just run through them. Start early, so you know, be, you should start reviewing your mortgage options four to six months before your renewal date. So this is, you know, there's a lot of we talked about last week or the week before the percentages of people coming up for renewal. So I feel like this is relevant from probably forty percent of homeowners. So four to six months before your renewal date, you should start looking at options. Review your current mortgage to understand the terms of your current mortgage, including the rate, remaining balance, the amortization, any penalty if you renew early, et cetera. Shop around. So don't just accept the renewal you get from your current lender. Shop around, compare rates, including banks, credit unions, speak to a mortgage broker, et cetera. Consider fixed versus variable. So I know a lot of people, I'm like a super pro variable. I've always been variable. I've never had a single mortgage, a single home I've owned that hasn't been a variable rate mortgage. However, in this environment, I would very seriously consider taking a fixed rate. So, you know, I'm someone who, if, you know, three years ago, you said, asked me fix or variable, I would have just said, I will never, like, I will always take variable. But that's because at that point, you know, variable rates had historically always outperformed fixed. This is one of the first times in history where we've seen the variable rates higher than the fixed rates for a prolonged period mm-hmm. of time. Like it's been, you know, a year, year and a half now where we've seen variable rates higher than fixed rates, which is insane. So, Consider fixed and variable rates, like evaluate whether a fixed or variable rate mortgage is more suitable for your financial situation and risk tolerance now compared to what it maybe used to be. So, you know, fixed rates offer stability, variable rates offer fluctuation and potentially a lower rate down the road, given where things seem to be heading. Negotiate as well. So I'll try to run through these a bit quicker, but I just, I feel it's very important uh, with all the renewals coming up. Negotiate. So use the offers you receive from other lenders and and leverage them. You know, I have people come to me and say, like, I'll say, what is your current lender offering you? And if it's something that's comparable to what I can get, I'll be the first to say, like, that's a really good rate. Like, take it, you know, but it's worth having that, you know, comparing apples to apples and saying, okay, if they're offering you this rate, let's see what we can do to, to drive that further down. And our lenders too, like if I go to one of my lenders and say, listen, they have a rate at, you know, BMO or CIBC or wherever, at this rate, can we match it? We do have lenders that will match the rate and they will, you know, they have escalation processes that they can actually negotiate. So definitely worth negotiating. Don't take the first rate you get. Evaluate your financial situation. So assess your financial health, including your income expenses, et cetera, because as I said, being able to restructure it, maybe lower payments, pay off some higher interest debts. This is your opportunity to do that and use some of the equity in your home to actually help support your your financial health. Uh, Shorten or extend the term. Same thing, prepay if possible. So if you do have the financial means, consider making a lump sum payment before renewal to reduce the principal amount and consequently Mm -hmm. the interest you're going to pay over the new term. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you pay off more now at the lower interest rate, when you renew, you're going to have less interest obviously applied to the the new balance. Get professional advice, prepare for higher payments. So plan for the potential increase in monthly payments, adjust your budget and spending accordingly. So again, going back to the four to six months, review your budget, look at what can we cut out, knowing our payment's going to go up $800, How do we offset that? Where can we cut costs now to best prepare for our renewal in six months time? And then lastly, look for flexibility. So consider mortgages with features like prepayment privileges, which again can provide flexibility for when your financial situation improves. You know what I hate the most about all this is that there's a lot of families who are getting stuck in the situation where they have to work more because they may not have like multiple income streams, or I mean, as, as most people do not, they have one job and then they've got young kids. And now because of the, you know, inflation and the increase in mortgages, then they can't put their kids in as much extracurricular activities. Yeah. Yeah. So then it's like, where, what happens with the family 
the balance in family life when things like this happen. That's it's frightening because there's a lot of it's a lot it's a lot of stress on people. And I definitely feel for for those that can't do it. Like we had to make some adjustments in our life as well, you know, just on I mean, because we're all involved in the same thing, just at different levels. But it's challenging. And I mean, it's yeah. important, I think, especially when you have young kids to spend a lot of time with those kids, because all of a sudden, you know, they're not young anymore. And then, you know, you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing. But, you know, what do you do? Like, so you work and then you try to work another job, but then your kids and where do you, where do you put them? Do they stay with a friend? Like, is hmm. there, are there lesser groups that you can put them in or activities that are, oh my God, like uh, volunteer type things? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Because I know that the cost of all that's gone up too. Yeah. You yeah, know, that's you... the thing. Like if you if you have a set budget, like talking about reviewing your finances and budget in advance of your renewal, like if you do that math and you say, okay, our payment's going up $800, we can only cut 400 and that's coming out of, you know, groceries and gas budget yep. or wherever. You, what options do you have? You either have to reduce your cost overall, potentially sell your home, which we are seeing people list, or you have to make more money. Like th those are the only two options. So yeah, and making gonna, more you know, money, you know, yeah. you're taxed more. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of people don't even want to earn more money because what's the point, mm -hmm. right? It's like, you're better almost to earn less. So where, like, where's the balance here? Canada. Jeez. <laughs> Seriously though, man, it's like, I mean, people have to get smart. It's been, I think it's been too long that people don't know enough about money and how it works. I mean, it took me years to kind of figure it out and I'm still figuring it out, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, I mean, we, we all are, but it's just like the general public has depended on the government so much for doing them doing the right thing. And now we're in a situation where it's all lost and gotten out of, out of hand. So we're, it's a uh, tough times guys, but you know, we, we move forward. Paul and I do what we can for our clients, for ourselves, for our families, you it's know, you, the listeners for you and for you, we do. <laughs> I give a we shit. Do. I give a you shit. Know, I, was, I was thinking today, like driving to the, I was like my, my, the kids are off. It's summer vacation. You know, I was planning to work from home, but you know, you know what? I'm going to go to the office. I'm going to do the show from my normal spot. I'm going to show up for everyone. Show up. You know what I mean? So here we are delivering. Mood boost, Greg. Mood. Are you ready? I got boost some bangers after, today. after that. Yes. I got four bangers today that I'm, I bet you at least three of the four nobody's ever heard before. That's yeah. how good these are. Oh, okay? I like it. I like that a lot. Number one. Want to hear a joke about paper? Never mind. It's terrible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Number two. Why would doors do well on social media? Because everyone looks for their handles. Yes. Yes. Two for two. Uh, number three. What's the difference between the black eyed peas and chickpeas? The black eyed peas can sing us a tune. Chickpeas can only hum us one. What? Yes. <laughs> and last but not least, this is my favorite. My nephew told me this last night, who's celebrating his birthday, actually, when this comes out. Shout out to Avery. Happy birthday. Two robbers were robbing a liquor store when Ron Robert... Wow. Two robbers were robbing a liquor store when one robber grabs a bottle and asks the other robber, is this whiskey? And the other says, yeah, but not as whiskey as wobbing a bank. Yes. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Thanks, Avery, for that one. What's um, the who who's the Oh oh my god, who's the hunter in Bugs Bunny? Who who talks with the El whiskey? Elmer, El Elmer, Elmer, Fudd. Elmer Fudd. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. not as whiskey as wobbing the as wobbing the bank. Yeah, right. That's yeah. him. That's him. That's, that's him. Elmer yeah. Fudd. We had some Elmer fun here today, Greg. Oh well, thank you for showing up. Thank you for being oh, here. Oh rap. <laughs> Thank you everyone for listening and if you're still listening thank you leave us a comment leave us a review like us subscribe we're here every week and shout out to our sponsors Gertin Parier Law and Centum <laughs> to the best. bye bye everyone we love you we'll be back next week for tuning in everyone we hope you enjoyed today's episode please remember to like share comment and subscribe because we'd really like that